Today we will talk about gluconeogenesis. Let's define it together. Gluconeogenesis is the production of sugar glucose from a non-carbon source such as lactate, amino acids, and glycerol. Let's now talk about the gluconeogenesis from lactate. First of all, there is two lactate molecules that should be converted into two pyruvate by the enzyme LDH, the lactate dehydrogenase. Keep in mind that this step is reversible, which means the pyruvate could be converted into lactate by lactate dehydrogenase and the lactate could be converted into pyruvate by the same enzyme, lactate dehydrogenase. This pyruvate molecules that are present in the cytoplasm will enter the mitochondria in order to be converted into oxaloacetate by the enzyme pyruvate carboxylate, the PC, one of the most important enzymes in gluconeogenesis. And this step couldn't be catalyzed without the presence of carbon dioxide, the CO2 molecule, and biotin, the vitamin B7, where the biotin is responsible for the functioning of the PC. In fact, the oxaloacetate is needed outside the mitochondria in order to be converted into phosphorinyl pyruvate, one of the most intermediate molecules of a gluconeogenesis that will be reversed, forming a glucose. But this oxaloacetate doesn't have the ability to cross the membrane of mitochondria. For that reason, inside the mitochondria, we convert the oxaloacetate into malate by malate dehydrogenase, where this malate has the ability to exit the mitochondria. Once this malate is outside the mitochondria, it will be reconverted into oxaloacetate by the enzyme malate dehydrogenase. Now the oxaloacetate is present in the cytoplasm. The conversion into phosphoenol pyruvate will be catalyzed by the enzyme phosphoenol pyruvate kinase. Amazing, now the phosphoenol pyruvate is present. It will be converted into the 2-phosphoglycerate where this conversion of phosphorinyl pyruvate into 2-phosphoglycerate will be mediated by the same enzymes present in the glycolysis that converted the 2-phosphoglycerate into phosphorinyl pyruvate. So if we compare the enzymes that are present in the glycolysis and the enzyme that will catalyze the same reverse reactions, which means in the glycolysis we convert the 2-phosphoglycerate into 2-phosphorinyl pyruvate by a specific enzyme. This specific enzyme will also catalyze the conversion of 2-phosphoglycerate into 2-phosphoenol pyruvate. I'll put the list of the enzymes in the upcoming slide. Keep in mind that the step that will convert the fructose 1,6-bisphosphate into fructose 6-phosphate isn't catalyzed by the same enzyme that converts the fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, where the conversion of fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate need a phosphate group, where we add a phosphate group on fructose 6-phosphate, forming the fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, a phosphate group on carbon number 6, and a phosphate group on carbon number 1, where this kind of addition needs a kinase. But because we are converting the fructose 1,6-bisphosphate into a fructose 6-phosphate, which means we will lose the phosphate group present on carbon number 1, in this case, we don't need a kinase, we need a phosphatase, which means an enzyme that removes a phosphate group. For that reason, this step specifically isn't mediated by the same enzyme present in glycolysis. Same for the step that converted glucose 6-phosphate into glucose, also is mediated by a new enzyme, a glucose 6-phosphatase, where we also remove the phosphate group present on carbon number 6 of the molecule glucose 6-phosphate to form a glucose molecule. And by this, we will end the topic of uh, gluconeogenesis from lactate source. Hope I make it clear for you. Don't forget to subscribe and I will leave links in the description for other YouTube videos. Thanks a lot.